Hey everybody, so today in this video I've got Mark from Every Man Has a Story and uh, we're going to hear about uh, his life a little bit in the Philippines and uh, how he came to choose the Philippines. Stay tuned. Yeah, so uh, how did I end up here? Yeah, so Mark, so how, how did you end up choosing the Philippines? Was this your first choice no. or did you look at any other country? No, I worked on cruise ships and I've been to over 100 countries around the world. I thought about Portugal, I lived in Mexico for a while. Okay. I thought about Ukraine, um, and I kind of settled more or less on Thailand, and then I started reading about they were changing things with the visas, and also they, uh, there was something about uh, getting health insurance. I heard that was like a new rule if you're over a certain age. That's right. And yeah. I've had quadruple bypass surgery, so I knew that would be expensive. Right. And so then I started looking at the Philippines just by stumbling across videos. I saw one of your videos, I saw Rike's videos. Okay. And, um, just started checking into it and I just uh, decided to hell with it. I just bought a one-way ticket. I'd already got rid of my house. I sold my car, got rid of some other stuff, put the rest mm -hmm. in the storage, bought a one-way ticket here and with not knowing a single person, never been to the Philippines. Wow. Stayed at the Pyramid House for 10 days and started looking for a nice apartment. I found Dulce Vida where I lived for almost a year and then I've been here for a little over a month. Okay. So, sounds like this was something you've been planning for a while while you were in the U.S.? Not really. I was kind of no, pushed really. into it, like, you know, bad things happen in your life. I had yeah. uh, some business partners. I discussed this in videos on my channel, but I had um, mm -hmm. business partners and a good friend of mine, and we had a contract with Holland America to take all of their ships and our program on board. Yeah. And because it was all a gentleman's agreement, they went around and cut me out of the whole deal and cost me several million dollars. So. Um, and okay. I had put a lot of money into, you know, putting the thing together a lot of time mm -hmm. and left me in a very bad situation with just social security and everything. And I said, well, I, um, you know, liquidated what I had. Um, I'd heard about Cambly, you know, teaching, sharp tutoring English online. And I set that whole thing up before I came here. I hadn't actually tried it. Okay. And so the day I got here at the airport, I had my brand new Lenovo computer that I just showed you. Yeah. And I'm waiting for them to pick me up, the owner of uh, the pyramid house, to take me there. Mm -hmm. And my computer bag fell off my luggage and <laughs> cracked, and the computer came apart. You know, oh, the man. screen popped off. And it, yeah, yeah. So I get to the room, and my computer doesn't work at all. It doesn't even turn on. A brand new computer. And I'm going, okay, this is my lifeline. This is what I was going to survive off of, was that you make a little bit of money on Cambly. Right, right. And I didn't even have that. So I got my Swiss Army knife out. I know nothing about fixing computers, zero. <laughs> and somehow, I fixed it. Okay. And I got on Canva and was able to work on that. And, and then about five days later, I met a German guy named Thurston. And he offered to take me to Casper Falls, which is very close to where I live. Yeah. And we went there, and uh, I had this little fanny pack on. I had my mm -hmm. brand new $600 Samsung Galaxy S9 in there. Okay. And I get the waterfall, I'm going to take a picture, it's gone. Oh man. And it popped loose. I had it, I had this fanny pack for 30 years, bought in Brazil. It's never come off before. Mm -hmm. It came off, fell in the river, with my phone, with my keys, everything. Oh man. And uh, we searched for it, couldn't find it. And as we're leaving, I saw some boys there, I said, look, I told them what it was, kind of explained to me, we drew them a picture of what it looked like. Okay. They said, if you find this thousand pesos. Next day, they came knocking on my door. They found it. They must have got wow. mess or whatever, and they found it. Of course, the phone was ruined. But I got my keys back and my other stuff, so and my fanny pack. Huh. <laughs> so, so things didn't start off well when I got here. No, no, I <laughs> guess not. So you decided the Philippines. What was the first place you landed at when you got to the Philippines? Where Where did you decide on? Well, um, when I came here, I landed at. Um, um, where was it? Um, Cebu at the McCann Airport. Okay. I was overnight there one day. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to the mall. I had to get a SIM card for my phone. And all these girls were following me around. And I said, this is weird, you know. They're <laughs> asking me questions. Are you single? You know, are you meeting somebody? No, no, I'm just here. And then I flew to Dumaguete because I booked the place, the Pyramid House. Like, the only reason mm -hmm. I came here is I just saw all these videos by other guys, you know, that have been around like you. Right. And so what they decided that's the place to go, maybe that's the place to start with. Okay. And it all kind of worked out, you know. And you're happy here. Yeah, I'm happy here. And yeah. 
Well, it's turned around 180 degrees since I've been here. Literally. Yeah, for sure. Literally 180 degrees. And so you've been here how long now? It'll be, it was a year in July. So a year? Been, yeah, like a year and three months, whatever. You know. Okay. So really you are here just like six months or so, nine months or so, and the lockdown happened. Yep. And um, had you planned on staying here or traveling around? Or? I plan on traveling around, you know, and okay. I, that's why I bought this motorcycle that I would read somewhere that you had to have a 400cc to be on the freeway, which is only true in like Manila, it's not true here. Right, right. And uh, that was one reason I got that. I plan on touring all over the place. Okay. And of course I haven't got to do that with the lockdown, but then yesterday, actually, or Sunday, me and my neighbor here, mm -hmm. we went on a 200 mile motorcycle ride. Wow. Up over that mountain, all around, Parallon, all the places I don't even remember where I went, but it was okay. up and over the mountain, I remember that. And when I got back, I was very, very sore. I said, I don't know if yeah. I want to tour around in Moose Island on a motorcycle. So That's a, a long ride, yeah. yeah. I think like, sure. you know, 50 miles is like maximum, so I don't think I'm going to be mm -hmm. touring around the Philippines on a motorcycle. Yeah, and, and here we're pretty lucky. The roads are pretty good, but there's a lot of islands where the roads are not so good, so. And I've had many close calls. Many, yeah. many, many. Matter of mm fact, -hmm. uh, Sunday, as we were, uh, Two motorcycles in front of us. They're mm -hmm. they're chatting to each other. You've seen that before. They go along the road, they're chatting each other. Yeah. And it's a guy that was cutting coconuts off a tree. They're falling under the road. So the guy in the car stops his car. <laughs> Not suddenly. Slow, yeah. slow, stop. These guys plan on riding the back of both motorcycles and total the motorcycles. Unfortunately, they didn't look like they broke any bones, but they were pretty bloodied up. So yeah. Yeah, you have to be careful here. And I, I got into a, an accident uh, with Ging and, and myself. It, it was very minor, luckily, but uh, yeah, it's, it can be dangerous. Dogs and animals running out in the road. And then have you seen the guys without the headlights? And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. My it's, neighbor, it's the, Dulce Vita, um, he was out at night and he'd had a couple drinks, but he's driving along. And there's one of the guys, the, um, not the, tri the tricycle with the sidecar, but it's just a pedal bike, it's not a motorcycle. Okay, yep. He's out on the main road at night, going like two miles an hour, no lights, nothing. And my neighbor just slammed right into him, busted up his leg, broke his, his ribs, broke his shoulder. And by the time they put him back together, his leg was like an inch shorter, with a steel rod in it. Wow. And the bills were astronomical. Mm -hmm. And of course, here in the Philippines, they won't treat you unless you've got money. That's right. So you can literally die in the hospital if you have enough cash on you. Yeah, I, I've got a friend in Cebu struggling with that right now, got into a motorcycle accident, and they literally, uh, when he didn't pay his last bill, um, they cut the meds off. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, insane. So yeah, you definitely want to have some uh, money for emergencies, and uh, health insurance is not a bad idea too. Yeah, so. you know, people talk about like, you know, I talk with my tutor, I talk to people from around the world, a lot of people in the Middle East, and Saudi Arabia's got a bad rap for being like this strict Muslim country, you know, and all these Sharia laws and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But in Saudi Arabia, if you're from Egypt or America and you wreck your motorcycle, they're going to take you to the hospital for free, fix you up for free, mm -hmm. not going to cost you anything. If you get COVID-19, they're going to treat you for free, put right. you up in a nice place and take care of you. And so, um, yeah. you know, the Philippines needs to do something. Because I always wonder what's going to happen if you have an accident, you're unconscious. Right. You've got the money if you're unconscious, will you just let you die? Yeah, how, how do you get the money out of your ATM or your card? Maybe left, I, I don't know about you, but I don't bring all my credit cards. I don't carry a lot of cash on me when I go around. So, no. yeah, I, I worry about that myself. So, yeah. um, so you, you've got a girlfriend. You've been uh, together for about seven, eight months. Yeah. So, yeah, and how did you guys end up meeting? I was, um, I got on Filipino Cupid for mm -hmm. one month okay. and I decided this is a waste of my time because of you know, the scammers and girls right. that aren't serious or, you know, whatever. It's just, it just seemed like a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm a person, I would rather just meet, meet people on my own, see a girl that's interesting, go talk to her. Mm -hmm. And that was what I was going to do. And then Jen saw me and she sent me a message. I sent her a message back and she'd only been on for like a week. It was her first week on Filipino Cupid. And I just, I, what I usually do is ask them for their Facebook. I said, if you have a Facebook account, I said, that's your shelter real or not. And she sent me her Facebook, and sure enough, you have parents and family in her house and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Loads of pictures. 
So I knew she was legitimate. And then I asked yeah. her, um, I said, well, let's just meet for coffee. Cause I, just, I was tired of wasting my time. Like, I'm not going to chat back and forth for yeah. weeks or days and, like, you know, never, never meet them. Right. I said, look, let's come meet for coffee, Tom Toms. And so she was all nervous because she'd never been on a date before. Mm. And she asked you to bring your mother. I said, yeah, bring your mother, bring your whole family out. <laughs> and so she showed up with her mother. She didn't say one word. The whole time she glared at me. <laughs> and uh, Jen didn't say our name. She was shy. So I was sitting there for like an hour with her and her mother. And then her two friends showed up. Mm -hmm. And nobody's talking to me for like an hour. Yeah. And so finally I texted her while we were sitting at the table. So do you want to see me again or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I really liked you. Okay, well, you know, you're not saying nothing. <laughs> and so, yeah, we saw each other like three or four more times. And first time she came into my apartment, cooked her dinner, had a movie, mm -hmm. and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And she didn't say a word to me like the whole day, you know, all night. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's it. I'm not wasting my time. I just, I gotta have a girl that has a, has a conversation. Sure. If you don't have a conversation, I'm not interested. Right. And so I didn't even message her. I didn't even say anything. All of a sudden, three days later, I haven't heard from you. What's going on? Mm -hmm. I said, look, this isn't going to work out. And I told her why. Yeah. And she said, oh, no, I really want to try. Give me one more chance. And so she came over again. And she started talking. And slowly, slowly, slowly. And then I find out she's excellent. Her English is excellent. <laughs> and so, you yeah. know, we talk about science and history. She's interested in politics. And mm -hmm. um, it just seems to get better. You know, I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes they're just not confident with their English skills, yeah. e even though we think they're fine. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, pretty common for them to want to bring a family member on a first date. Yeah. Um, in fact, I actually think of that as a good sign, as a, as a good province. I was going to say that. I think that's true, too. That's yeah. very true. Um, very true. I don't, I'm not much for them bringing 10 people on their no, on the that, first like, date. <laughs> at a nice restaurant, they bring like the whole village. Right, you know? yeah. So, but yeah, I think that's a great sign, so it's, that's awesome. So, um, you'll explore the Philippines. Have you thought about any other country, or do you think this is it? This is where you're going to stay? Uh, I never like to commit to anything. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're working on getting her a passport. Okay. And once we get her a passport, you know, we'll probably take a couple of little trips to like Thailand, um, you know, Vietnam maybe South Korea, maybe mm -hmm. Malaysia, and uh, eventually I'll be going back to the States to visit family. Sure. And whether she'll come with me or not, I don't know. It's gonna be, she, she's not really interested in travel. Right. She's never been on a plane, she's never been on a boat, she's never, she's never been with more than 20 miles from her house. Yeah. And yeah. I've been in over 100 countries, so sure. there's a big gap there, you know, so. Yeah. But I don't know, I mean, it's, I don't know. Um, I don't hate America. It's like, you know, I would, mm -hmm. if the right circumstance came up, you know, mm -hmm. I, would, I would go back and live in Utah, I think. Yeah, I think there's still a lot of good places to live in the U.S. Um, yeah, so it's just not for everybody. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, the thing is, it's almost like change of latitude, change of attitude. It's like coming here, and I, it may have just been the timing of my life. Maybe if I'd stayed in America, things would turn around, too. I don't know, but... Sure. Um, once I came here, after I got that first two weeks out of the way, mm -hmm. it's just like a spell was broken. And all of a sudden, things kept getting better and better and better. Mm -hmm. And it's been that way ever since for the last year. I mean, every day gets better and, yeah. you know, I mean, lots of friends here. Yeah. Because we stand out, you know, so you'll find sure. yourself. I've had people come and ask about my motorcycle, they see my YouTube channel, or they just mm -hmm. say hello to you because you're obviously a foreigner. Right. And so you meet a lot of people, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm kind of the same way. I, I don't, uh, I'm not too set on one spot. So if something better comes along as far as a place to live, then uh, I'm open to it, you know. Um, but uh, I think that's the best way to enjoy life, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're kind of stuck. I mean, well, yeah, we are. We can't go to like Apple Island. I don't think it's, it's just, uh, I don't know how long this pandemic is going to continue. <clears throat> I've got the, the quarantine and everything. And, Mm -hmm. How long these countries can survive, shut off from the rest of the world. Yeah, and it's not looking good in the Philippines, really, um, as far as there's so many resorts, so many... I don't know if you've been to Robinson Mall lately, but yeah. half the shops are closed down. I know. I mean, I remember going there like a Saturday and Sunday, it was just packed. Yeah. And now yeah. it's just shut down, you know, this... And, thing. and malls here, the mall culture in the Philippines is really... It's I know, just it's huge. It's like it was in America, like in the 70s, the malls were like new and you... You think they love the malls. Right. And Absolutely. So. 
I think a lot of people just can't afford it. They're just, they're just in survival mode. Yeah, and these stores aren't going to pay rent for no customers, so. No. Yeah. It's kind of like Bo's Coffee shut down. You know? Bo's Coffee shut down, which is a big coffee chain here in the Philippines. And then when uh, a big coffee chain is shutting down at a mall, you know there's a problem. Because that place has always, always had customers, even before always, the mall yeah. opened, like the hour before. Yep, that's right. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, guys, uh, this has been uh, an interview with Mark from Every Man Has a Story. Check out his channel. Uh, it'll be linked down below. And his uh, girlfriend has a channel, Every Woman Has a Story. story. So, <laughs> so, guys, thank you for watching. Check out Mark's channel. Check out his girlfriend's channel. And uh, see you guys next time. Thanks.